For more perspective on those IMF World Bank meetings, let's bring in Hossein Askari. He's a professor emeritus of international business and international affairs at George Washington University's Elliott School of International Affairs. Welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. Now, do you think sanctions or more sanctions on Russia are working and how are they impacting the global economy, especially poor and developing countries? Well, I think uh, one of the mistakes that the United States has made with sanctions, uh, they put a little bit at a time, and it's taken time. I think when you put on sanctions, you've got to put enough. It's like a, you, you know, you've got to get over the hill, and they have not done that enough. And many of these sanctions will take time to have an effect. But in the meantime, what you're seeing now in the global economy is a number of real problems that, that this has caused, the war. Number one, of course, is the energy crisis, because Russian energy is basically, you know, in part cut off. Uh, Ukraine is one of the largest exporters of food, so there's a food shortage. And Russia is now, um, you know, blocking Odessa, which is the important part for Ukraine to export its food. And at the same time that this has basically sparked inflation, you have the background, which has made this much, much worse, was we had this pandemic. And because of the pandemic, all the major Western economies, they had to have large fiscal stimulus. And that has added to demand, while supply of all the essential items has been restricted, namely energy, food, and so on. So you have this inflation going on. And of course, the perfect storm is the the last issue, which is because of this inflation, the central banks in the West uh, are raising interest rates. And with that rising interest rates, the poor developing countries are going to have to pay higher on their debt. And so the food problem is a shortage right now and it's high prices, but this debt crisis is also on the horizon. So based on the leaders' statements this week, do you foresee their plan of action tackling global inflation? Will they be on target? And when can we expect inflation to ease? I think that uh, the plan of action, the United States, clearly, I think it's the biggest culprit. It did not act fast enough. Now that inflation has taken hold, it will be harder to dampen it down. Uh, my guess is that in the case of the United States, uh, the U.S. inflation is running about 8.5%. But much of that inflation in the United States, if you basically take out food and energy, it's still 6.5%. To dampen that inflation will take a quite a big rise in interest rates during this year. And, uh, and I don't think we're going to get inflation under control, at least in the first half, it's going to be more in the fourth quarter of this year. So this inflation is going to continue, I think, for another six months. And so, you know, all of the chaos that we've got at the moment, it's all contributing to the rise of digital currencies. Uh, but how do you foresee that playing out, especially in regards to the regulation of digital currencies? Well, I think at least, again, in the United States and worldwide, we're a long way away from having a plan of action to deal with digital currency and how it should be regulated. Uh, all the lobbyists in Washington, D.C. are running around. They want to get what they want because, as you know, as well as I do, the name of the game in this world is greed, and everybody is trying to get what they want. Nobody's really cared about the, what the state of the world is. Yes, there are a few policymakers in Washington and around the world who are gathered, and they do I assume, really care about the poorer countries and about inflation, but it will take them quite a while. I don't think it's immediate. They're acting as if it's immediate, but it's not. One of the issues, if I may just add this, why it is going to take some time, is that all this stimulus money that's there has added to demand, and in the United States, at least, we have a shortage of labor. There is a shortage of labor. I cannot get anyone to do work that I need done to build a shed. It is very hard to find workers in the United States. And so wages are going up at the rate of about 6.5% too. So it's a, it's a chain reaction going on.